best and easiest way to get your PS3 controller to work on your uh, Windows PC. So I got two folders below you're going to have to download. There's two links. Download those two zip folders. Okay. Well, the first thing I want you to do after you download those zip folders, go to your control panel. Appearance. Folder option. Click view. And uncheck hide extensions. Make sure that's unchecked. Apply and OK. When you close them out, we're going to right click the PS3 remote zip folder. Extract here. Once it's extracted here, you have this folder. This folder, you have a couple installs here. First one you want to install is the 360 drivers. Pick your Windows OS and install the drivers. That's the program. Mine are already installed, so I'm not going to do that again. This is your 4.0 framework. If you're playing games already, you should already have this installed. Same as the DirectX, you should already have that installed. The Visual C, I think, should be installed also. Like if you're unsure, install them anyways. They'll usually tell you if it's installed. So yes, I'm going to try installing this. See, it says I have the same or higher already, so it's already installed. If you have to install them all, it's going to take a little while. So once that's done installing, your computer's rebooted. I'm going to open that folder again. This is where this folder comes into play. I'm going to go to Computer. Local Disk. Program Files. And you're going to drag that Scarlet folder into the Program Files here. Drag this in here. I've already done so. So I'm not going to do it again. So once you do that, go into that Scarlet folder and bin. We're going to send monitor and driver to the desktop. So right click, send it to desktop as a shortcut. Same with monitor. And now we can close that out. Now we're going to run the SCP driver. This is going to be your PlayStation 3 controller drivers. So make sure your PS3 controller is plugged in to the USB. Right click. Gonna run as administrator. Now here, if you're not using Bluetooth, uncheck that. If you're using anything older than Windows 7, you have to check that. 7 and up, don't check that. Bluetooth, whether you're using it or not, it's up to you. And then click install. Once that's done, I'm pretty sure it's going to make you reboot your computer. Now once your computer is rebooted, your PlayStation controller, mine's not plugged in, we'll plug that in. PS3 controller is still plugged in. I'm going to run the monitor. Now this is your PS3 controller. See I have a USB right now. Shows that it's charging. I unplug it. It shows that it's in Bluetooth. And the battery. How well the battery is right now. It's full so I'll be good for a while. That's how you monitor the controller. Now once that's done, you have now emulated the Xbox 360 controller to the PS3 controller. So now you're, any game or anything you come on, it's going to pop up as an Xbox 360 controller, but really you're going to be using a PS3 controller. Okay, now the second part we're going to emulate the keyboard and mouse to the PS3 controller. So the PS3 controller is going to emulate the keyboard and mouse. Like a lot of games don't have full controller support. 
and old school console gamers like myself like to have a controller, well, you're in luck because XPatter will turn your keyboard and mouse into a controller. So we're going to extract XPatter here. Extract here. I'm going to have this folder. XPatter program and your controller images. Now these controller images, there's tons of any controller you have, you can use. I'm pretty sure it's in here. They even have Guitar Hero in these images. I made my own. This is blue, the pink. You see they all have pink backgrounds. I made mine blue. It's better on the eyes. So that's the image we're going to use. Now let's go back. I'm going to open up XPatter. Click on New. And the first thing we're going to have to do is open up an image. We're going to use a blue one. And there we have it. Now we're going to do the sticks. These are your analog sticks. We're going to en enable the left. And just do what it tells you to do. I'm going to enable right. I'm going to go left, up with the right analog. Now we're going to do the D-pad. Enable. And do what it tells us. Up, down, left, right. Now triggers. We'll do the triggers before the buttons. Enable. Now hold left, hold right. Now let's do the buttons. Now, whatever buttons you didn't do, you have to do. So let's do select, start, square, triangle, circle, X, L1, R1. Press in left analog, press in right analog. And there is all your buttons. So now that we have all these buttons lined up, we're going to play with them. So I'm going to hit OK. I already have a couple on here done, like Escape. I have Escape now, like where I just tap Start is Escape. That's what happens if I just tap it. But if I hold Start, it'll be Tab on the keyboard. So I tap it, escape on the keyboard, I hold start, it's tab on the keyboard. Now how you do that, so we're going to click on that, we we'll go to advanced. Now what you do is, you're going to check this, and you're going to hit escape. This next box should pop up, you're going to hit hold, add hold zone. We go back to add hold zone, you set a time limit. I always put it on about half a second. So I'll put it on 0.5. That's how long it before it hits tab. So when I tap it, escape, hold zone, it's going to be tab. So just imagine what you could do with all the buttons between just tapping and hold. Now, the D pad. I want to cycle through weapons on one key on the D-pad. That's going to be down. So I want to cycle through my weapons. So my weapons is going to be one, two, and three. This be my assault rifle, handgun, grenade. So I want to go to advance. First one, I want to be one. I want to add a cycle stop. Two. Add a cycle stop three. And close this. And now we are good to go. Now, this is the D pad here. And when I hit down, it'll be one. I hit down again, it'll be two. And it'll keep cycling through my weapons. And every time I tap it, it's going to keep cycling through one, two, and three. And we can also bring this up. Let's put the keys to make it easier where they belong. And I didn't do this last time, but we can do it this time. So uh, let's find start. This is start. Put them there. Let's do the R1. This is R1. Move that up there. L1. Triangle. 
square x and circle. Now we take the d-pad, which is this one, and put it over the d-pad. Left analog, put over the left analog. Right analog, over the right analog. Now these are analog buttons. This is my left analog button. This is my right analog button, also known as R3 or L3. And this is stop or start, I mean, which is escape. Let me hit OK. Now you see all our buttons are where they belong. You see here, I'm moving the mouse with my right analog. Just do that. You hit this little uh, wrench, and you're gonna go down to mouse normal. That's what it's set up as. Same thing with here. This is gonna be your character movement. You want to set it up as WSAD. So that'll be moving your character. And this is the mouse. Now it's gonna take some playing around with to get the hang of it, but you could pretty much tweak any game to the controls that you want. 